Hello, fight fans! Welcome back to What Culture Combat. I am Gareth, and today what I'd like to have a bit of a bit of a chat to you about is my predictions coming into this incredible event on Saturday. Of course, we are talking about UFC 247, and it's a card kind of it's quite a top-heavy card. You've got those top two bouts at the top of the card, which are John Jones versus Dominic Reyes for the light heavyweight title, and then Valentina Shevchenko taking on Caitlin Jukugian for the flyweight, the women's flyweight UFC title. So quite top-heavy, but we're gonna get we're gonna get to that. We'll get to that later on. First fight I want to talk about right now is Juan Adams taking on Justin Taffer. So it's a heavyweight clash. We love, love heavyweight clash here. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about on in terms of this clash is the fact that Juan Adams is, in my eyes, probably one of the prodigies in this heavyweight division. Uh, he's, he's, had, he's coming off a two-fight losing streak, which is unfortunate. I don't think he's had a lot of luck in those fights. But if you saw him on the Dana White's contender series, this guy, when he, when he gets you to the ground, you're in some serious trouble. He's an NCAA Division I wrestler. Once he gets you on the ground, you, you tend to not get back up. And he's got some serious kind of TKO power as well. So I think if he does get Justin Taffer on the ground, he could be in some serious trouble. But that is not to say that Justin Taffer is a pushover by any means. Because this guy, he's, he's got some he's got KO power. He's in, he walks people down. He stays on his feet. He just can't, he marauds at people. He's terrifying. If you've seen anything of this guy, he's absolutely terrifying. He did get knocked out. These Both, both these guys coming off losses. But he got knocked out. Um, Justin Taffer got knocked out in the first round in his last fight. Which is, that's going to do a lot. Not going to do a lot for your confidence. They're both kind of in in a bit of a rut right now so they both need the win desperately so they're going to be putting it all out on the line which is what you want to see this is the kind of fight you want to see and it's gonna these are two heavyweights that have a lot of potential Taffer's quite green right now probably needs to kind of add a few more layers to his game to become a serious threat in the division i feel like one adam's probably a bit further ahead in his uh, his progress right now his evolution as a fighter and i think yeah he gets tougher to the ground Taffer's in some serious trouble so i'm gonna go for one adams with a tko victory Next up, we have our featherweight clash on this card, and it's between Merced Bektic and Daraj. Um, it's an interesting, really interesting bout, this one, because it's evenly contested. Massively, super even. Their records are pretty much identical. Their ages are pretty much identical, but their fighting styles are definitely not. Bektic is super explosive. He's more of a counter striker. Uh, he's all right on the ground. He's not the best grappler in the world, but I'd say in terms of takedowns, he's got he's got that within him, within him as well. He kind of puts that pressure on, and he plows through you, plows through you with combinations, explosive combinations, but then he tends to like driving through people and just knocking them straight off the feet. But that's where this fight gets super interesting because I believe Dan Aisha is probably one of, one of the most underrated grapplers in that division right now. His takedown defense is insane. He's, he's one of the strongest people I've seen in that division. Um, and he can obviously do the, do the business himself. He can take it to the ground. He's an efficient striker. Um, so if they stay on the feet, he's probably not as efficient and not as uh, dynamic as Bektic when it comes to striking. But he can still pick his shots and he, he can do a job there. But I think if he gets him on the ground, he gets Bektic on the ground. The guy is uh, an unbelievable grappler. I think he'll just he'll twist his arm off or just try and choke him out beyond belief. So I believe Eyes definitely has more tools in his in his kind of arsenal coming into this fight. I think he's better equipped. It's super even. This is this is for me. This is the hardest fight on the card to predict, but. I've got to predict somebody. So I think Dan Ige is going to do it. I think he gets him on the ground. And I think he just, yeah, he nullifies, nullifies all of Bektic, uh, Bektic's strong suits. So I believe Dan Ige will get the job done on the night. Next fight we have on this main card is Derek Lewis, the heavyweight, the absolute bottle, the, 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 the vessel of charisma himself. Derek Lewis uh, taking on Ilya Latifi. Uh, Ilya Latifi is... An interesting prospect in the heavyweight division. This will be his first ever heavyweight fight in the UFC, uh, which again, it's it's one of those things. It's really odd to predict and really hard to predict how he's going to do in in the heavyweight division because in the light heavyweight division, he actually he lost his last two fights. He lost to Corey um, Corey Anderson and Uzdemir. So it's ah, it's a tough one to predict, really. But I believe Derek Lewis is one of the absolute best knockout artists in the game right now he's a monster really that guy walks towards you and starts throwing bombs just just take cover just try best to survive that, that tends to be the case uh, he won his last fight he came off a two fight losing streak uh, to cormier and i believe it was uh, junior de santos um, he came off that and he actually won his last fight against Ivanov. He won that by split decision. So he went the full distance, well not the full distance, three rounds, and, and, and got that win, which was important for his confidence, I believe. But I think in this fight, 
he's got something to prove. He wants to prove he can still do the business. He can still knock people off the feet, which I completely do not doubt you can do that, uh, Mr. Lewis. You're, you, you're one of my, I, I really enjoy watching Derek Lewis, purely because he just seems like a really nice guy. It's very similar to watching Corey Anderson, but then you get the added kind of bonus with Lewis that he's a nice guy, he can also break your face. So yeah, I, I feel like <laughs> I'm slightly biased because I want Lewis to win. So yeah, my, uh, my prediction for that fight is that Derek Lewis will come out on top. He will knock out Latifi, and I'm not really sure whether Latifi goes from there. Also, I really want to see the Derek Lewis interview uh, after the fight if he wins, because he, he's probably just going to take his pants off again and say he's got sweaty. Moving on. Okay, we've made it to our co-main event. The, for the first kind of main event uh, fight we've got on this card. And it involves Valentina Shevchenko taking on Caitlin Chikugin for the UFC Flyweight Women's Flyweight Championship. Which is, yeah, I'm super excited about this fight. But without further ado, I'm not really going to go too far into Shevchenko just yet. Because I believe we all know what she brings to the table. I think we should focus on Caitlin Chikugin. Um, she's outstanding when it comes to grappling um she she can she can withstand a lot of punishment she's won most of well she won all of the fights in the ufc by decision uh, she's not a finisher though which is i think where she may struggle in this fight um against shevchenko shevchenko's durable she can go she won't get not i can't see her getting knocked out in this fight and Ah, I think Shevchenko has it in her to outstrike um, Chikugin. Shevchenko's just so hard to beat. I mean, she can throw, <laughs> she can throw kicks that take people's heads off. Jessica Rai, look at the look at the Jessica Rai knockout. That was oh, it, it still gives me shivers to this day because it was just one of the most horrific things I've ever seen in my life. She's she's cold. She's an assassin. I've said it a couple of times now, but she's an assassin in the octagon. Um, she's. Also, a super well-rounded fighter. She can throw, she can take you to the ground, everything else. I've mentioned all that. But I think the one chink in Shevchenko's armor, maybe, maybe coming into this fight, is the idea that she's doing a film right now, which you might laugh me off and go, oh, she's only doing a film. She's a professional. She'll be focused on this fight. It's fine. We said that about Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey had a lot of spotlight when she was coming into the, the kind of losing the last two fights that she both lost. And she had a lot of spotlight on her at that point. She was doing a lot of uh, film work, a lot of TV work. She was kind of popping up all over the place. And it's obviously it's not on the same level as that what Shevchenko's doing, but it just starts just just kind of splitting your focus a little bit. You may not even notice it, but you are. You can't you can't be. She seems like a perfectionist. You cannot be perfect at absolutely everything all of the all the time because it's just going to take up too much energy. Something's going to drop. Potentially, she may not have worked up to the same standards as she has in the past for this fight. Could she have underestimated Chikugian? Ooh, we don't know. My personal prediction is, no, that's not going to happen. I'm just kind of saying that as an argument more than anything. I think Shevchenko will probably near decapitate Chikugian in this fight, which is, and it's not a great thing to say, but Shevchenko is terrifying. In my personal opinion, she's up there in the top three mixed martial artists, genuine mixed martial artists in the company right now. She's outstanding. And yeah, I'm super excited for this fight. For me, it's probably the fight I'm most excited about on this card, which is blasphemy, I know, because we're about to get to our main event, the top fight, the draw of this entire card, which is Johnny Bones Jones taking on Dominic Reyes for the UFC light heavyweight title. So, not hard to call, um, but you kind of... you you. If you wanted to see Dominic Reyes win this fight, if you want to see him kind of take down Jones, the main argument for that is you just want to see that light heavyweight division shook up a little bit. The status quo is at this point and has been for years now that John Jones is the indomitable force, the top dog in that in that division. The only way that Dominic Reyes probably could maybe take him down, maybe maybe win this fight is by landing one of those fierce lefts or maybe using his kicks to chop him down. Like, but I feel like we're clutching at straws a little bit because Dominic Reyes, yeah, he's, he's a mean dude. He's undefeated, 12 and 0. Yeah, outstanding. But he's never been in this spotlight. And you can say what you want. When you get into a main event spotlight, when you get into a title fight, all the lights are on you. All the focus is on you when you're, when you're the main event. People are waiting for you. You're the last fight, okay? The pressure, the press, everything else. It's, Dominic Reyes has never experienced anything like this. Being interviewed every single day, be, being the focal point, well, one of the focal points of the entire event. And he's saying all the right things to the camera. He's looking at the camera saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm the guy to beat Johnny Bones Jones. I promise you, I promise you. Yeah, yeah great. You promise us. You're not going to turn around and say, no, I'm not going to do it, are you? So th th these, these promises don't really have much weight. And John Jones has said it all the, like many times in the build-up to this fight. They've all said the same. They've all said they, they were the, the they were the person to beat John Jones. Many people have tried. Many people have failed. Do I think Dominic Reyes is going to have it in him? Going to have enough to take down John Jones on this massive stage and shake up the entire division, which is something that is probably much needed at this point? No, I don't think he is. I think John Jones has got too much for him. I think he's already in his head. He's he's 
absolutely meticulous. He's methodical. I think he, the older John Jones is getting, the more relaxed he's getting in the octagon. He's, he's still explosive when he wants to be, but he just he downloads the information of the fight, fighters he's going up against. If Dominic Reyes comes out blasting, puts the pressure on John Jones, puts him on the back foot, yeah, he stands a chance because it, 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 when you're on the back foot taking a lot of damage, it's quite hard to kind of read your opponent and everything else. But if John Jones is allowed to kind of come forward early on and just start dissecting his, his man and to start chipping away at him and figuring out where when the strikes are coming and everything else, Dominic Reyes is in some serious trouble. The longer this fight goes on, he's in some serious, serious trouble. And I just, I can't see John Jones getting knocked out. The guy's chin is just... We've said it before in the past, though. We've, Anderson Silva, people like that against Chris Weidman. Ironically, Chris Weidman just lost to Dominic Reyes. We said it then. We said, oh, we can't see Anderson Silva getting uh, taken down. It's just not going to happen, everything else. But it happened. So there's a chance. There's obviously always a chance that Dominic Reyes could do the business. But no, I think John Jones wins this fight. And I think he breaks his kind of decision win streak with this as well. I think he, he might go out there and try and knock out Dominic Reyes just to kind of prove a point. Dominic Reyes, is, Dominic Reyes is this knockout artist. John Jones has it within him to choose how he wants to win a fight. And I think he's going to knock out Reyes. There we go. There's been an awful lot to compact there, and that is just the main card. Obviously, there's, there's the prelims and the early prelims. We'd be here all week if I was to talk about all those. But it's, it's not the greatest card in UFC history, but it's still intriguing. There's still a lot of uh, pieces in the jigsaw that could be could, like changed over and popped into place after this, after this event. I'm intrigued. Now, that's the way I'd sum this, this card up. I'm super intrigued. I'm sure you're probably intrigued as well. Let me know in the comment section below what your predictions are. Have I completely butchered what you think is going to happen? Or do you agree with me? Let me know in this comment section below. I have been Gareth from What Culture Combat. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to everything involving What Culture Combat. And I will see you very, very soon.